Canon's working on a 1200 mm f10.5, and are you ready for this? A 2000 mm f15 lens. That's right, that's not a typo, that's not a mistake. RF 2000 mm f15 lens, and they have a mirror based design to help keep costs down. Want more? Stay tuned, this and more after the intro. Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker, but just before I get to today's news, please go ahead and like and subscribe. Now, the more likes a video gets, that tells me that you want more of this type of content. And one last thing before I get to today's exciting news. Well, I just launched the night challenge two and a half weeks ago, and the challenge is almost up, but if you shoot a video at night, you could win a brand new Zion Weeble S and an Ordinary Filmmaker baseball cap. Now, the contest does end May 14th, which is, well, that's tomorrow at midnight my time. If you want to find out more details, watch this video here. But now, let's get to the news. USPTO patent shows various optical embodiments for mirror lenses. That's right, mirror lenses. Now, big advantages of these mirror lenses are reduced size, weight, and cost at long focal lengths. Now, if we take a look at the upcoming 1200 millimeter lens using traditional lens architecture, well, this lens is likely going to cost well over $20,000. Just look at the RF 400 millimeter and 600 millimeter lenses priced at 12,000 and 13,000 respectively. But this new mirror design could make these long focal lengths, focal lengths affordable for the ordinary filmmaker that wants to capture the stars, planets, and galaxies out there and get up real close and personal to wildlife that doesn't want to be seen. However, now this lens design does have some, well, downsides to it. Generally, images are low contrast, you've got a fixed aperture, you've got a donut bouquet. And yes, and maybe Canon's fixed some of these, but first of all, what I want to do is I want to talk about this lens right here. This is the 800 millimeter. I love this thing. As you can see here, I can get up close and personal with wildlife. I was able to shoot here with a two times extender or with it off, and I was able to get really close shots of these birds, see how they completely fill the frame. And when the weather was good, back in December and in August, I got these shots of the moon. Look at how close I am. Look at how sharp the moon is here. And then, in cropped mode, with a two times extender, I got this close to the moon. I mean, it's like I'm flying right over the surface of the planet. It's just truly staggering. And then here, in this image here, these are the four moons of Jupiter. And this wasn't using the two times extender. Now in hindsight, I should have focused a little bit better. I should have dialed the ISO a little bit better. But still, in this video here, now depending on what you're watching on, you can see six moons of Jupiter and it's absolutely stunning. So when detractors say that, you know, this is just a gimmick, it's, it's not for professionals. Yeah, sure, it, it may not be for professionals, but for ordinary filmmakers like you and me, this thing is so much fun. I'm, I use this thing almost all the time. Whenever I go on walks, I put this in my backpack because you never know when you're going to want to shoot something. And the same thing happened last week. I went for a walk. The whole goal of my walk was to take my 50 millimeter and practice stills photography, which I did for 30 minutes. But then I switched over to this thing for the next hour and a half. And that's what you're watching right now. These various clips were shot with a two times extender on or off, depending on which uh, clip you're looking at. I can't remember which ones were shot with the extender or not, but you can see the level of detail that I, can, that I got here. Now, it was a sunny day. If you're shooting in the wintertime in northern latitudes, you, this is not a very good lens, and you're basically limited to between, what, noon and two o'clock to get enough light with the two times extender on. Without the two times extender on, you can shoot from about 11 o'clock till about 3 o'clock and you've got enough light. But in the summer season, this thing is absolutely terrific. I love it. And now, imagine. Imagine these lens embodiments that Canon's planning on coming out with. The Canon RF 400mm f3.6, the 800mm f5, the 1200mm f8, and these two here, which I'm really excited, the 1200mm f10.5, and the 2000 millimeter F15. That's just staggering. Now let's take that 10.5. You put a two times extender on and shoot in crop mode, that's 24. You're close to 3000 millimeters. Now the 
the RF 2000 millimeter, putting a two times extender on that one, and at F30, I don't know that I'll be doing many moon shots or shots of the planets. I would certainly try, but I'm really curious by these lenses. Wow. 12, to be able to get a 1200 millimeter that's affordable. I mean, I, I really love the 800 millimeter. And yes, let's bring up this clip again of Saturn and Jupiter, and you'll notice there's some chromatic aberration. It's not as sharp, and that's what can be expected, but moving to a mirror design to keep costs down to allow regular folk, ordinary filmmakers, to go out there and shoot the moon, to shoot J Jupiter and Saturn, to see the rings of Saturn. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but that's pretty exciting. To see the moons of Jupiter, that's pretty exciting. One of the reasons I call this channel The Ordinary Filmmaker is that I am ordinary. There's nothing special about me. I'm not a famous photographer or videographer. I'm like you. I'm learning with every day that passes. I'm trying new things. And when I find technology that excites, I mean literally excites me when I get out there and I can see the results, I'm giddy like a schoolboy. Uh, when I came home, with a video of Saturn and Jupiter here. This was two days before the conjunction. Um, once I color corrected it, I was stunned. I was absolutely stunned. Because in the LCD, all I really saw was a dot. But to actually see the rings around Saturn, uh, is like I got shivers down my back. It was really exciting. And that's what I see as these. If they can keep the cost down, if they can make a 1200 millimeter or 2000 millimeter under $2,000, using a different design, I, I'm, I'm all in. I, I mean, look, this is, this is if, if you think I'm a little crazy here, this is, again, this is an 800 millimeter lens. 800 millimeters, and it's what, $1,000, around $1,000? 899 US. We're, we're not too far away. We're not too far away with the right optics and put a two times, or even a 1.4 times extender on, because I think if you go to a 2,000 millimeter, you're probably looking at a 1.4 times extender. I'm not sure that a 2x is going to work, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited by these opportunities, and it gets me dreamy, it gets me excited, so let me know what, you, what do you think. Do any of these lenses interest you? Do you shoot wildlife? Do you like shooting the moon and the planets? Do you have a telescope? Would you like to turn your R system camera into a telescope? And in a way, that's what I've done, is I've turned my R5 into a telescope, making that initial purchase price of $4,000 not seeming nearly as much because I've been wanting to get a telescope and with this lens I don't feel that I need to and maybe just maybe being able to get a 1200 millimeter someday and putting that on the camera to be able to get in closer because I would love to see more banding of Jupiter again let me throw up this shot you can see one band towards the north you can see you can see the tilt on Jupiter as well my goal is the next clear night that we have where Jupiter's available, I want to get out there and I want to shoot Jupiter. I want to, I want to, I want to fine tune the ISO a little bit. I want to fine tune the focus so I can get Jupiter as sharp as I can to see the banding with the two times extender. Because what you're seeing right here, this image here or this video clip, this was with the 800 millimeter without the two times extender. This was the first time shooting with it, and I didn't use the magnifier to zoom in to get the best possible focus. So I'm really excited to try again with the 800 millimeter to get the best that I can out of this thing. But a 1200 millimeter, it's got me super excited. I know I keep talking about it over and over again, but that's the dreamer in me. I'm no Elon Musk. I can't create my own rocket company to be able to go into space, but you know, for what, $899? I can at least see what it looks like through my own eye. That's powerful. But one last thing before I close out this video. Uh, yesterday I put a call out to go ahead and subscribe to my son's channel, Planet Liam. He just turned seven, and he's using this channel, he doesn't realize this, but he's using this channel to improve his reading and writing skills, to help develop new skills, and I'm not forcing him to do it. He usually comes to me and says, Daddy, I want to do a video today, and I say, sure, son, let's do it. And we'll put a video together, and, you know, a lot of them are ramblings on. If I talk the way he did, you'd probably say, I don't know, what are you talking about, Simon? Uh, what Liam will decide is he wants to talk about nature, he wants to talk about planets and stars. So we put that in the teleprompter along with his intro, and he reads off his intro, and then he delivers his monologue. And he watched it last night, he took a look at his video, and he says, This is boring, Daddy. I said, 
all right, so what are you going to do in your next video? Well, I'm going to make it more exciting. I said, try telling stories next time. Look directly into the camera lens and tell stories. So we'll see how well he does, but thank you so much for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, whether you're interested in this channel or not, please, as a personal favor to me, visit planetliam.com, the, the, or sorry, visit Planet Liam on YouTube. That's his channel, Planet Liam. I've got a link in the description down below and subscribe. Now, when I woke up this morning, he had 92 subscribers. That's 41 subscribers he picked up yesterday. So I'm pretty excited and you should see the excitement on him. It's like, oh, I got to do a new video. So that is it for now. Thank you so much for supporting my channel and my son's channel. Um, but don't forget to subscribe because if you haven't subscribed, you also have a chance to win two Angelbird 128 gigabyte AV Pro MK2 V90 SD cards along with a dual UHS-2 card reader, also by Angelbird. Or you could also win a Ulanzi LED light package with an accent light, underwater light, and various other flat panel lights to help light your subject, or as a really good solid starter kit for someone who's starting their own channel. And if you do want to help support this channel, please use my links down below for B&H or Amazon, or consider buying an Ordinary Filmmaker baseball cap, the one I'm wearing right now. They're the same one, same color pattern. It's $34.99 at OrdinaryFilmmaker.com. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.